Hello everyone. This is the walkthrough video solution for June 22 Unit 1. The first question states, a machine has a power of 750 watt and transfers 150 kilojoule of energy during a time t. Which of the following expressions give t in seconds? So when you look at this question, the very first thing that should pop up in your mind is the equation. So power equals energy by time. So if you make time the subject of the equation, that means uh, energy by power. So energy is given. Of course, it's given in kilojoule. You have to convert this to joule. And divided by 750 will give you the expression for time. The second question says, a sphere falls through a viscous liquid as shown. Which, of, which row of the table describes the upthrust and viscous drag on the sphere as it accelerates downward? So the volume of the fluid displaced does not change once the sphere is completely underwater and therefore upthrust remains constant. So upthrust doesn't change but as it is falling the sphere accelerates and as it accelerates the velocity increases which increases the drag. So upthrust remains the same, viscous drag increases, answer should be B. Which of the following is a scalar quantity? Very obvious, the answer is D, work because it is the product of two vector quantities and always remember the product of two vector quantities is a scalar quantity. For question four, the graph shows the relationship between tensile stress and tensile strength for a material. Which of the following gives the Young modulus of the material? So the graph is a straight line up to this point. The stress divided by strain at this point is equal to the gradient but this will only give a very small triangle that's why you have to draw a tangent here answer is c the gradient of the tangent to the line at the origin so you have to draw a tangent here for this point let's see the stress divided by strain at the breaking point no the breaking point the graph is already curved if, even if the question had said the stress divided by strain up to where the graph is a straight line, even then the answer would have been wrong because it only gives you a small triangle. For five, the question says a student determined the value for G by dropping a metal sphere from rest. The student measured the distance fallen and the time taken for the sphere to fall. The student obtained a value for G of 11.2 meter per second squared. So focus on this part everybody. It says releases it from rest. When you release something from rest, the value of the initial, initial velocity is zero. So the equation comes down to S equals half GT squared. So when you look at this question, I mean the value in the question it says, you get a larger value of G. So a larger value of G means the distance that you had measured must have been greater. So the student measured the distance was greater than the actual distance. Answer is B. If there was an option in the answers that the measured time was smaller, so a smaller time would also result in a greater G but for uh, this question option D says time was greater no time has to be smaller for the value of G to be greater six a rocket accelerating horizontally due to a constant resultant force the mass of the rocket decreases steadily focus on this part everybody the mass of the rocket decreases steadily So when you recall the equation resultant force equals ma and the question also mentions a constant resultant force the resultant force remaining constant if the mass decreases the acceleration must increase so my answer is b
Question 7 says, two arrangements P and Q of identical springs are subjected to the same tensile force F. When one spring is subjected to a tensile force F, the elastic strain energy for the spring is E. Which row of the table gives the total elastic strain energy for each arrangement? For this question, you have to recall uh, the resultant value of spring constant when they're in series as well as when they're in parallel. So when two identical springs are connected in series, the spring constant of the arrangement is halved. When in series, spring constant is halved. And when two identical springs are connected in parallel, the spring constant for the arrangement is doubled. Since the force is the same for both, we can use the equation A equals half F squared by K. For series, since K is half, E will be doubled. And for parallel, since K is doubled, E will be halved. Answer is D. The velocity time graph shows the motion of a particle with a constant acceleration. P, Q, and R represents the magnitudes of each area shown. Which of the following expressions gives the total displacement? Okay. So if the question said gives the total distance, answer would have been area above the graph plus area under the graph. But you have to notice the term displacement, everybody. So the question says total displacement, and displacement is a vector quantity and therefore direction must be taken into consideration. R is the displacement in one direction and Q is the displacement in the opposite direction. Therefore, the resultant displacement, or in other words, the total displacement would be R minus Q. Why are we subtracting Q from R? Because R is greater. So if the question had asked for total distance instead of displacement, we would have said R plus Q. So the answer would be D. Question 9 says, a cyclist rode along a slope at a constant speed. The increase in vertical height of the cyclist was del H. The slope was at the angle theta to the horizontal as shown. The forward force of the road on the bicycle was F and air resistance was negligible. Which of the following gives the work done by the cyclist? So the force that the cyclist exerts is F and S is the distance traveled. So using trigonometry, you can find out S, at least an expression for S. So that would be, here the distance moved in the direction of F, that is the displacement. So sine theta equals del H, as in opposite by hypotenuse. So S will be equal to del H by sine theta. and the hypotenuse is S. So work done equals force times displacement, and you can clearly see from here that displacement S is equal del H by sine theta. So F times del H divided by sine theta is my answer. Answer is D. 10 is very interesting, everybody. When compressed by a force of 50 Newton, a spring had a length of 12 centimeter when compressed by a force of 70 newton the same spring had a length of 7.1 which of the following expressions gives the stiffness k of the spring in newton per centimeter answer is b and let's see why is the answer b when you look at the shape of the graph everyone it's a compressive force so when you increase the force the length decreases and once you have a graph of force against length, the gradient always gives me the spring constant, or in other words, the stiffness. So change in y-axis divided by change in x-axis. So this is the change in y-axis, 70 minus 50, and change in x-axis would be 12 minus 7.1. That's why the answer is B.